Since the advent of human civilization, man has fought darkness. Earlier, with the setting of sun, the working day also used to end. To prolong productive hours, man tried various medium for illumination, ranging from wood to whale oil. Natural seepages of oil on surface were known to man from ancient times. Also known were its illuminating powers. But it was never tapped commercially on a large scale. A certain Colonel Drake changed all that by commercially scouting for oil in Pennsylvania, USA. The operation was successful and soon kerosene, a distillate of oil, became the illuminant of choice. Oil industry was born. Colonel Drake used the whiskey barrel to store oil and it would stay as a measure of production and consumption. Soon, this overwhelming success attracted an army of pioneering prospectors and the price of oil began to crash. The industry was growing but was not organized. One man would change all that. John D. Rockefeller realized early enough that perfect competition in this industry was not workable and was a sure path to ruin. He set about consolidating the industry ruthlessly and in the process became world's richest man and established a monopoly. Just when the usage of modern means of illumination such as the electric bulb were gathering pace, the chief function of oil changed from illumination to energy. Two developments were responsible for this, internal combustion engine and the suburbs. Invention of internal combustion engine and mass production methods of Henry Ford made automobiles more accessible to a larger section of population. This, coupled with the popularity of suburbs where people needed to commute the great deal of distance to work, well, and very truly, gave birth to a giant global industry. Soon, the American way of life, that is love for automobiles, commute to and from suburbs, became the developed world's way of life. Burgeoning demand necessitated increased production. By the early 20th century, all the dominant powers had begun a scramble for oil exploration. By a quirk of fate, most of the successful strikes were made in the deserts and semi-arid regions such as modern Saudi Arabia and Iran. The inhabitants and the rulers of these regions, oblivious to the true potential of the natural resources, signed away concessions to western companies for just peanuts. The unfavorable terms can also be explained by the fact that all the major oil companies came from developed world and the fields were in regions under direct or indirect colonization. Environment was changing. US antitrust ruling broke Standard Oil, founded by John D. Rockefeller, into seven separate companies known as the Seven Sisters. The world was also changing. In the wake of Indian independence in 1947, a host of nations became independent or started struggle to free themselves of the foreign yoke, direct or indirect. The new leadership resented especially the dominance of Western oil companies 
and wanted more equitable distribution of the revenues from oil. Leaders like Mossadegh of Iran and Abdul Gamal Nasser of Egypt were galvanizing the streets. In the face of changed environment, the Western oil companies had to relent and compromise. But it did not solve the basic problem of periodic glut and price bus. In this background, a Venezuelan, Pablo Perez Alfonso, mooted the idea that the producers should regulate oil production to stabilize the oil prices. Thus was born OPEC. Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. This cartel was going to have a far-reaching effect on the future of the industry, with most of the major producers in OPEC being from the Middle East. Oil had the potential to become a weapon of diplomacy. This weapon was used to devastating effect. In the 1973 Arab-Israel conflict through oil embargo. Oil prices went through the roof and long gas lines became common in the developed world. The age of cheap oil ended forever. The scenario was to repeat itself during the Iranian revolution of 1979 which was led by the charismatic Ayatollah Khomeini. The stranglehold of OPEC seemed total. It was too good to last. The inexorable laws of economics were catching up with the OPEC model. The global demand slowed down after peaking in 1979, in part because of high prices. Oil industry was after all price sensitive. In addition to diminishing demand, fresh supply came in from fines in Africa and North Sea. Coupled with this was heavy investment in alternative technologies such as nuclear by the main consuming countries. The belief of OPEC in oil inelasticity lied shattered. Influence of OPEC started declining. Also, the massive capex undertaken by oil companies in good times remained unused. The supply was so much in excess of demand that even the first Gulf War in 1990 failed to boost the oil prices appreciably. The outlook at the cusp of the millennia was still pessimistic. In response to the prevailing low prices, there were some high-ticket mergers to stabilize the industry. Exxon merged with Mobil and Texaco with Chevron at the end of the 20th century. And one day, the world changed. Suddenly, strike on the Twin Towers was a paradigm shift. Issue of oil security again became important and oil prices began their unrelenting upward march especially after the Second Gulf War. World had also changed in other regards. Spectacular economic rise of India and China was pushing demand up. Coupled with this, was the left of the center politics again coming to power in major oil and gas producing nations such as Venezuela and Bolivia. Hugo Chavez in Venezuela and Morale in Bolivia reasserted the control of the state over the natural resources. Elsewhere, Putin in Russia was reclaiming the assets which the state had ceded in the crony capitalistic days of Boris Yeltsin. All the factors converged to push oil prices to their historic high. Cassandra's predicting that we will soon run out of oil again took the center stage. $500 a barrel no longer seemed a remote possibility. And then the subprime crisis in US snowballed into a major global recession and the oil prices retraced their steps. As of now, we are faced with many relevant questions. Will the earth really run out of oil or it will keep pace with consumption? Will the new technologies such as solar, wind and fuel cells supplant oil? Who knows, 
The future, just like oil, is hidden in deep recesses.